Hey, what's up guys? Paulo Munoz here from ZeroGuides.com. Welcome back to another video in this mini-series of the new features, my favorite features of ZeroGuides 2021.6.2. So in this video, I'm going to show you the brushes that allows you to do this type of thing um, around the hair. Uh, obviously, you can use it for a bunch of different things, but in the practical example that I have for you today, I'm going to show you the sort of stylized hair. Um, and I'm talking about the curve alphas, these two right here. All right, so the first thing that you'll notice is that you have two different brushes, but they do exactly the same thing. Uh, I'll show you what the difference is in just a second, but essentially what these brushes allow you to do, if I select the curve alpha, um, I'm going to select the hair and toggle off some of the ones that I already created. In fact, let's just give this a different color so you can see. Yeah, so these ones are the, the actual meshes that I created with this brush. Uh, so I'm going to hide that. And by the way, this character is part of another video that I think is pretty cool, uh, showing you the process of, or like the workflow of concepting in 3D that you can also find in the YouTube channel or in the 3D Concept Artist website blog. Um, anyway, so if I click with the curve brush selected and drag, you can create things like this. So I'm going to talk about these brushes as well as the new settings of the stroke palette. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. I just want to show you essentially what this brush does. Um, and you'll see it has this kind of like star type of shape. Um, that's what these brushes do. They take a 2D image, a black and white alpha or a, yeah, a black and white image, and it extrudes this along the curve. So if I go to the alpha palette, let's go ahead and chuck that into the left tray. Um, you'll see it is a star, right? But I can also you know, use this alpha 58 or 54, sorry, and click again to update that. And if you look at it, what we have now is just that sort of series of dots. And those dots, when you extrude them, it creates that, um, yeah, this the effect of these tubes, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm going to use another one, maybe this alpha 23. It's going to be a bit crazy, but pretty cool just by changing the alpha. And you notice that I still have the kind of like the curve, the editing curve, so I can just move things around as many times as I need to. And then if I want to change or try something else, maybe this alpha, it's a tube, but it has, <laughs> it is a hollow tube uh, or I don't know, a square alpha, whatever I need to, right? So super, super handy thing. Um, really, really powerful in so many different ways. Obviously the the way that I found it to be um, really useful is for this type of stylized hair, but it can be used in a, in a bunch of different ways. All right, so that's what this brush does. The difference between this and this brush, so Curve Alpha and Curve Alphas, is that it, with this one selected, with the Curve Alpha, when I click and drag, I create a new brush, uh, sorry, a new strand of hair. If I click somewhere else to do another one, Zero automatically locks this previous one in. And this is the same behavior as uh, brushes like the Curve Tube brush. And then you can just you know continue editing, click and drag to add another one, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, so the main difference really is that you can select the curve alphas and you can draw a bunch of oops, a bunch of curves at the same time, like so, and you will still remain uh, in editing. So you can tweak all of these ones independently, which is really, really powerful, right? So that's just the main difference, but it acts in the same way. And you can also, you know, change this. And in fact, you can also increase the, the brush size and that in turn will change the, the thickness of that curve. So you can create all of those really cool, um, yeah, hair strands. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's how they, they work. Um, now I'm going to show you how to play around with this, um, where is it? Stroke palette. Let's just chuck that one here. Uh, because the, all of these ones are kind of new. In fact, this should be the default settings, right? So let me undo all of these. There we go. And let's let's just start creating something um, that actually that we can use, right? So I'm gonna change to a different color. Oh, yeah. Let's just keep it keep it simple, so that you can see. I'm gonna use a blue color. All right. So. Um, I'm going to reset this as well to the defaults. All right. And let's go ahead and click and drag 
kind of like following yep I'm gonna remove the undos kind of like following the flow of that hair so the first thing that you'll notice is that now these brushes are kind of like sticking out I'm gonna reuse the brush size and update by clicking once just to make it a bit smaller um, and this has to do with this repel strength and the repel fall off so this is kind of like creating a little buffer so that the the strands don't go straight from the from the surface that you're adding it but instead it's just sticking out and then bending now if you start moving things around as it is right now with the default settings you click and drag like this you can move things around which is pretty handy um, but you'll notice let me undo that you'll notice that whenever I click if I click right in the middle anything above that point so all this area right here can be bent and can be changed whereas anything um, after that point is is it still this, the same like it hasn't changed right I can move all of these things but that point from that point onwards is straight it hasn't been changed or, or tweaked or altered and that has to do with these bend start and bend end right so basically this switch allows me to bend the start right and what that means is really um, let me just bring in my uh, epic pen so that I can explain this a little bit better because they're pretty simple uh, pretty simple settings but you know sometimes it's good to just have a better idea of what they are let's say that this is where I click this is my point um, let's call it midpoint right and then you have this start right here and then you have the end right here so whatever you click that becomes the center point right it doesn't have to be the middle of the curve it could be here whatever you want right and if you have the bend start enable that means that anything from that point towards the start can be bent all of this whereas anything because I, the the bend end is not enabled all of this is going to be straight or it's going to be stiff or remain the same so let's clear that up so if I go ahead and enable the bend end I can click on that middle point but now the top and the end and the start can be bent so this is the kind of like the previous behavior of these brushes uh, before all of these settings were introduced um, so if you want to revert back to to this state <laughs> um, that's how you do it and then you also have the lock start and the lock end so these ones are pretty handy because as you can see I can take this one and this one and just move it around uh, but the lock or the the start of this curve is gonna be locked and I can do the same thing let's say let's place the end of the curve somewhere that I want to keep it say around there right um, maybe a little bit longer yeah let's say around there and I can go ahead and click on lock end and because we already have lock start uh, we can basically move and reposition this curve but the point where we started and where we ended this curve are gonna be the same or are gonna maintain that position so I'm gonna push this in a little bit and I'm gonna start like doing this sort of thing so you have a lot of control now with these brushes all right so I think I'm happy with this just wanna try to wreck it a little bit to show you something else that you can do so I'm gonna push it up um, maybe a bit more there we go so all I did was just move the end of that curve and you'll see how weird <laughs> it looks um, there's a couple of hidden features in all the the curve brushes in ZBrush with the shift and with the control key that are really really powerful so the shift key like in sculpting mode allows you to smooth that curve so if I click the curve and then hold shift I can basically smooth that curve out right which is awesome so that's really cool now the other feature and that's kind of like the the cool trick that I really want to show you is the rotation so if for example you want to create some kind of like curly hair instead of this uh, stylized one I'm gonna just increase the brush size so that is pretty obvious what I'm going to do um, it already has some some nice rotation so it's gonna look cool uh, I'm gonna change the alpha to uh, I don't think we have a, a good one you know what we can create our own alpha as well let's just go to a plain 3d make polymesh 3d and we can use another of the cool brushes like um, these mesh extrude pro uh, pro uh, I have already covered this in a different video so I'm just gonna do this 
and basically each one of these points is going to create a different strand of hair so you can just variate that um, because every time that you create one of these you will also create different polygroups I can also hide and delete that plane and also we can go to the alpha palette here and I can click on from mesh to bring in this this um, this window that we can rotate around and I think 15 yeah this this resolution is fine I'm gonna click OK so now I have this alpha base on these points that I did quickly with the uh, mesh extrude pro depth let's go back to our character here and now that I have these selected this alpha selected with the curve brush I'm gonna click here to update and we have now a custom brush how, how cool is that so the the last kind of like tip that I'm gonna give you with these curves is that you can hover over the, the brush or oh sorry not the brush the curve with the brush and you'll see the cursor changes from this red uh, circle to this kind of like aqua color that is your editing brush so you can also right click when you see this cursor the blue one you can right click or press the spacebar and you can increase the radius of that brush without necessarily changing the size of your brush so in this case you can click and then hold control this is the other modifier that I was talking about and that allows you to rotate the curve along the axis of the curve or rotate that that alpha oops let's do that again hang on there we go so you can go crazy with how much rotation you add um, I'm just gonna show you the the effect there we go so let's assume that that's um, what you want just to make kind of like a braided type of I don't know like a plait or something um, and that's that's all good <laughs> we can go ahead and click somewhere else and now I can split this remember every time that you add a new curve Zbrush will mask out the rest so I can split on mask so this is a concept I explained in previous videos split on mask so now this strand of hair is on its own um, sub tool and I can just modify it and you know tweak it as many times as you want to so uh, I'm gonna subdivide it just a couple of times to to smooth it out and give it a color that matches this character and maybe use the move brush to just put it into place right so pretty cool stuff right one more thing that um, you can do if you wanna sort of not do this twist but do it more like um, like in this this stylization but add a bit of more randomness is to select again the curve alpha or the curve alphas whichever and let's do that right remember that I have oops forgot to change to my sub tool of the hair uh, you have to do it in a in a sub tool that doesn't have subdivisions that's why it didn't allow me to do that all right I'm just gonna place this quickly all right so yeah I'm happy with that let's click on this uh, just to lock that change and I'm gonna split on mask so now this is on its own now the cool thing about this as well if I go into solo mode and let's go for a different color and toggle this off right is that these are separate meshes right so if I go to the polygroup palette or sub palette polygroup sub palette here I can click on auto groups and that should give me uh, maybe they're merged here at the end actually uh, that's not a big deal <laughs> you can still use the move topological so M sorry B to bring in the brush palette M for move and T for uh, topological so this this brush respects the continuity of that topology that you can see here so this one is super powerful because you can go ahead and click on this point and then uh, I think I have a key curve enable there we go um, you can just add a bit of randomness to those uh, strands of hair which you created with a single brush right so this is super handy uh, something going on here but it's not a big deal um, so yeah this allows you to add a bit of randomness and create sort of these sort of flyaways and make the sculpture a lot more organic a lot more interesting and uh, with a you know with a little bit of tweaking but the the starting point the way that you created this was just with a single brush so that's really really powerful 
and that's basically it. So you can play around with those things. Uh, and just to wrap up this video, there is another thing you can play around with, with these brushes. So if you were to just create a new one, you see the tapering from this thick root to the tip. You can change that from the curve functions. Uh, sorry, not the curve function, the curve modifiers. So if you disable this size, that's what this size is enabled in this curve here. So you go anything on the left hand side in ZBrush is kind of like referring to the base or root. Anything on the right hand side reflects the tip or end. So you start with full full size of the brush all the way to zero, right? So you can tweak this. So let's enable uh, size. You can do that and click to update and you see it updates or you can invert it. So you can reset it and invert it. So now it starts like this and then goes like that. Um, so yeah, you can tra change all of these, click on the curve to add a point so that it's more sort of tapered. Um, you know, all those sort of things are part of this, um, this curve modifier. So I just thought I'd mention that in case you wanna, if you wanna play around with this. Uh, but other than that, those are the tips that I wanted to give you with these awesome brushes um, and that extra one that I mentioned uh, to create your own custom brushes. You can create any mesh that you want and turn it into a an alpha that you can that you can create these sort of strands of hair. All right, so I'm gonna leave this one here and in the last video of this mini series, I'm gonna explore the snake curve brushes. So these ones right here. These ones are really cool and very creative uh, to generate a bunch of random shapes that you can then turn into some kind of creature and, and stuff like that. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.